Hello there. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I posted that Bajaton had released a new radio that looked identical to the near-perfect Radtel RT950 Pro that I did some reviews on. I also posed a couple of questions. Firstly, is the internal hardware the same as the RT950 Pro? And more importantly, does it also suffer from being deaf on long wave and medium wave? Well, you know me, I couldn't resist it. It was an itch I had to scratch. I went out and bought one to test and tear down to find out. Now, this is going to be a very short video because actually I'm supposed to be packing for my holiday to Istanbul and Mrs. Electra Bananas doesn't know I'm down here doing this video and I don't want to end up in the doghouse. So without further ado, grab a cup of tea and a biscuit or two, get comfortable and join me as I find out the answers. Now I've been through all the physical aspects um, and the functions and they do appear to be absolutely identical. You'll just have to take my word for that. Um, but what I do want to do is, first of all, just make sure they're configured in a similar way and then go in and check the medium wave long wave performance. I'm gonna put the Badgerton into all band test mode to make sure everything's enabled. There we are. I'm going to switch them on together. Welcome. Frequency mode. Right now, I just want to make sure I can key up um, the budget on in 27 megahertz, and you can see there it works. That's good. Right. Let's focus on the long wave and medium wave reception. So just go into modulation, make sure AM selected. You can see that LSP, USP, CW is all there. Um, let's go to work band and select medium wave. Okay, right, time to get the signal generator. Now, if you want to see how I'm doing these tests, check out my video EB27, where I go into a bit more detail. So I've got my tiny SA Ultra in signal generator mode, 1 megahertz, 800 hertz modulation, 80%, going for a 41 dB attenuator, and then a DC block. So the signal generation level is currently at home, minus 146, 120. Oh, oh my goodness. Can you hear that? It's not deaf. Oh my goodness. Time for a cup of tea. It That is definitely not deaf, guys. That's quite a respectable, minus 122. It's fixed. Could this be the perfect radio? For 2025, could this be the budget transceiver for 2025? Let me know in the comments. But before I get carried away myself, let's check on long wave. Okay, I think I'll set it at 200 kilohertz. Nice round number. Bear with me a moment while I mess this up. Can I go down in steps of 100 kilohertz? There we are. Now I can't hear anything, can you? Uh, oh, here we are. Okay, so it's not deaf, but it's not great on long wave. I did expect it not to be as good on long wave, it never is, but that's not deaf. Minus 87 dB. Not great, but not deaf. Now, as a sanity check, let's um, see what the performance is like on the old version of the Pro, which, of course, we know has the problem. And let's just do a double check, make sure my equipment is set up correctly. So, 1 megahertz receive, transmit on the signal gen at 1 megahertz. OK. 
Okay, all set up, all right. Now let's increase the output and see we're not getting anything. So that just goes to show that the older version of the Pro, uh, not the new one that's been fixed in the newer one, but in the older one does have this problem. Now before Fred in the Shed comes after me, let's check whether we still got the stellar performance on CB band. So just powering up here and we've got let me just check around 35.1 we had 34.9 on the RT950 so a little bit more power on the budget turn at 27 megahertz not a lot 0.2 of a db 0.2 of a dbm now let's check the harmonics because that was just amazing on the RT950 for 27 megahertz in this price range. Let's see if we still got it. Let's set it up. I've got my minus 41 dB attenuator. Okay, let's let's power this thing up. Remember, we've got to keep in the uh, PT button until the first harmonic reaches the power output we achieved just now. It's coming up. 34.9 that would do second harmonic is minus 43 so over 40 b db very good so we've retained the stellar performance of the rt950 pro in this bj9000 so we've got fixed am and medium wave sorry uh, medium wave and long wave and we've still got fantastic performance on CB proper job so the question is why is the medium wave and long wave performance so much better on the BJ9000 well I had to find out of course so I've stripped them down uh, on the left here you can see I've got the 950 Pro and on the right the 9000 now if you want to know how to do this strip down uh, take a look at my video EB25 where I take the you step by step on how to take one of these things apart now, I'd like to make a quick disclaimer here so the board on the left my RT 950p is an example of the board without the modification to fix the long wave and medium wave issue the board on the right, marked BJ-9000, is an example of a modified board which addresses the long wave and medium wave issue that we'll see later. Now I want to make it clear that sales of new Radtel 950 Pros and a budget on BJ-9000s will all use the modified board that fixes the issue. Now the first thing I notice is that they're both marked RT950 and the date manufacturing date is the same um, and where we should be really focusing our attention is on the SI4732 chip on the top left there so this is where we're going to be looking at our, or focusing our investigation uh, let's have a look you can see there the SI4732 on the top left of both PCBs and see if you can see any differences so I can see something you see here pin 8 that's the AM input pin goes to a DC blocking capacitor and then you'll say you've got some capacitors or inductors going down to ground from the RF input can you see that there Whereas on the BJ900, you still got that DC blocking capacitor and no additional components going to ground. Wow, wow, wow. So could that be the cause? Most likely. You see, let's have a look again. You see no components going to ground there on the BJ9000. Now what about on the reverse side? So on the reverse side, uh, you can see you've got the HF input signal path there. It looks like the, that item there is an LNA. And you see that capacitor there? Look at the color. And then that 
Is that is that a voltage protection device? I'm not sure. Take a note of those and then compare it to the PG9000. That that protection device looks a bit different. Though it's probably not actually very different, but that capacitor there looks very different. It looks smaller. And on the RT950, it looks bigger. You see, it's got a different color. So clearly, there's some component differences. And they look quite simple, too. I mean, it's not like there's a different IC or anything like that. So there you go. I think, you know, that with a bit more investigation and analysis, we could fix the older boards on the Badgerton and Radtails. Not now, though, because I'm supposed to be packing from a holiday, so you're going to have to wait until I come back. So well done to Radtail for fixing this issue. Um, as you can see, this modified and fixed board from Radtail appears in both Radtail's own radio and also the Badgerton uh, RT BJ9000. Um, and I think really that what they've done is amazing. So now with this issue fixed, I think you know we could ease this radio could easily be considered to be the best budget transceiver of the year. What, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'm also confident that with a bit of analysis on the differences between the old boards and the new boards, we could come up with a step-by-step -step solution to restore long wave and medium reception to the older version of the board in, in both the, the Pro and the BJ9000. So watch this space and let's see what we can do. So which one should you buy? Well, as you can see on the face of it, the two radios are identical. Unless the Badgerton BJ9000 is substantially cheaper, I would opt for the Radtel RT950 Pro, owing to the track record and frequent software updates from Radtel. Now, if you're interested in the Radtel, I've got a 5% discount code for you. Check the description for the link and the code. And I'll also leave links to the Badgerton and all the other equipment that I've used in making this video. So, I'm going to bring this to a close now. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you found this video interesting or useful, um, please remember to hit that subscribe button. It really does help me bring more content like this to you. And until next time, keep dunking your biscuits, take care, and 73.